Hello everybody and welcome to yet another Magic of Dragonite build video. Now this is definitely, without any shadow of a doubt, the best in slot for any Magic of DK and to be honest, almost any class in the game right now of some equivalent version of this build. So it shouldn't be the case that that is true, but unfortunately it is. There are, well... There is one set that is clearly overperforming like crazy. You will have already seen it, hence the name of this video and the build, Sloading Screen. Um, yeah, this build is very, very brutal, very difficult to survive. And I've made it so it now has great sustain and still good flat damage. But also is maintaining the debuffs and buffs and the brutal set that it actually contains slows, which I'll come on to in a sec. I've also optimized all the CP and I've done what I believe to be the best skill bar, but of course that will come down to preference of playstyle. So as with any of my build videos, before you go in the chats with your little Rambo spree of, Ooh, Blopsy, I think that the build is totally garbage, you're not running chains. Change it. You know, if you want to run something else, go for it. Change the build, you're good to go. But in the case of my build, this is what we're running. So... As per usual, we are running Tri-Food and Tri-Pots. We're going to start with those nice and quick. Tri-Food is glorious. Gives you all the stats you want. You need it. It's great. And then we're running Tri-Pots because that is going to give us Stamina and Magicka Return. The health, nice little bonus, but it's really about Stamina and Magicka. On our armor sets, we are running our favorite set, Back to Business, to Scoria. Now, note that I am four sturdy on the armor and one on my shield. Everything else is in pen. So in total, I am five sturdy and three in pen. You are welcome to change that sturdy to in pen ratio based on how much you block. So if you feel you run out of stam, more sturdy. If you feel you're dying too easily but not running out of stam, more in pen. It's a pretty simple compromise on that front. But for me, both my scoria are sturdy and all of our glyphs in the case of this build are actually magicka. We don't have a single triglyph in this build where I may normally have so. So Scoria, for those who don't know, gives us health. That's going to be really important because of that lack of triglyphs. It's going to be quite valuable. Um, we are going to get some other health bonuses from our stats elsewhere. But it's also going to give us this large, large proc damage that generates burst on DK, which is a class that lacks burst. Now, note I am in 5 heavy and 2 light. We are not using Bloodthorn. For those who don't understand why that's important, I'm likely to actually make a video explaining generic DK playstyle um, for those interested at some point in the near future. But anyway, we need a source of stamina sustain while blocking. So we go for heavy armor instead because that's how we're going to get that incoming stamina. In this patch, heavy armor is probably pretty advisable anyway. The damage is very, very high, especially with, when you see how much this puts out. Our next five piece set is the Aids of Sloading Screen Slodes. So this set is clearly overperforming. This needs an enormous nerf. When it gets nerfed, it won't be if. When it gets nerfed, I will change this build and update it again with fresh stats, fresh CP, etc. depending how we, ch how we change it. But for the time being, you've got to run this. It's too good not to run. So heavy body, heavy boots, heavy legs, and then light gloves and light sash. If you feel you are over-sustaining, Rather than change any glyphs, I would advise running 5-1-1. So just keep in mind that if that is the case, you'd want to make a medium gloves. But to start with, I would suggest running 5-2. I think overall play style of that is much better for a DK. You don't really get much benefit. <laughs> Guy dancing in the background, look at that. You don't really get much benefit from the medium passives. You only get the Undaunted, which is not really worth it. So this set gives us Magicka Stamina, Spell Damage, Weapon Damage on the 4-piece. So that's giving us Magicka, that's great, more damage, more sustain, Stamina, that's great, more blocking, and Spell Damage, that's great. Ignore the weapon damage, we're still getting three brilliant traits, there's nothing wrong with those. The five piece is where it gets totally out of hand. Damaging an enemy has a 10% chance to put a Leeching Shadow on them, dealing 853 Oblivion damage every one second for six seconds. This effect can occur every six seconds. Let me explain a few things as to why this is ridiculously overtuned right now. Firstly... It's 10% chance on any damage. Well, we're running a lot of dots. We're a DK. We've got tons of dots. We're damaging four or five times every second, technically, with all the dots. So we're going to be proccing this extremely easy. This probably has at least a 90% uptime at the moment. It's almost always up. The second thing about this that makes it so obscene is what Oblivion damage is. 
Oblivion damage is damage that can't be buffed or debuffed. Note that second word, that's the important bit here. It can't be debuffed. This ignores resistances, it ignores battle scaling, it ignores shields, it ignores major protection buffs. This goes through everything. So all fight, 24-7, we have a 1k dot that is entirely unmitigatable. There is nothing that will prevent that. And note that it is not an 853 dot. It is nearly a 1k dot because the initial impact is also a tick. So although you have one second for a total of six seconds, so six ticks, you also get an initial one. So you're actually getting seven ticks of 853, which if I quickly whip out the mighty calculator, just to save the time, gives us a total of 5971, which is divided by six. So the total dot that this is doing is 995 every single second for the duration of a fight. That ignores everything. This is brutal. You've got to run this set, unfortunately. I hope that this gets nerfed, but God help us if it doesn't. Um, one thing to mention with this set, you have to build for single target damage as much as possible. The more AoE that you have with this build, the less effective it will be because you'll start proccing in AoE the slowed on the wrong target. So I have taken out all of my AoE skills, adjusted the bar accordingly to maximize the benefit of slowed because this set is so strong. Our next 5P set is equally ridiculous. I'm so sorry anybody who expected a friendly build. This one's going to be about brute force. I'm trying to get the best build and unfortunately this is what it is. Back bar is 5 piece of, God help us all, Jorox Bane. Jorox Bane gives us health, health recovery, healing taken, and the big dog. When you take damage, you apply Major Defile to your attacker for 10 seconds, reducing their healing and health recovery by 44%. This effect can occur every one second. Again, 100% uptime with this. But this is where it gets better and why I have not used this before, because previously... If you wanted to add Jorix Bane, you would have to make sacrifices elsewhere in your build. You no longer have to, because if I put this on my front bar, I am only running the health and health recovery, because two piece pieces count as a, sorry, one piece two handers count as two pieces, which means my back bar is going to have Sorry, my front bar is only going to have health for health recovery. I'm not really wasting, so to say, stats on healing taken. The health's important. We've not got triglyphs. The health recovery is a bit rubbish, but it's fine because it's all worth it for back in that absolutely brutal five piece. Major defile by 44%. You've got to understand just how strong 44% heal debuff is. People running Breath of Life can nearly not heal at all, and it's going to get even worse in a sec. Now... This would normally be 30%, but I've optimized my CP to up this even higher. The traits on this are going to be infused on the ice staff. This is very important. You will need this ice staff. A bit annoying to farm. Took me six hours. I did have horrible RNG. Probably take you about an hour or two to get. But it is going to be important to have that ice staff. That wants to be an infused magicka still. You're going to need that to help your sustain. And then your other jewelry needs to be all infused. Infused reduced cost. Infused reduced cost and infused spell damage. That will keep your stats at the best possible point whilst being fully sustainable. Our front bar then is going to be willpower, one hand and shield just to up our damage. This is going to be Nern homed weapon and sturdy on the shield. Again, you could also run impen on the shield if you so wish. And this is going to give us extra magic on our front bar. You've got two choices here. Either you run a poison or you run a weapon and spell damage enchant. So the weapon is spell damage enchant nice and easy. Gives us spell damage. I actually, in the case of this build, because of how brutal this healing buff is, prefer to go even further and use this one here. Vitality Draining Poison. This inflicts minor defile to your target and grants you minor vitality, reducing their healing taken and health recovery by 22%, while increasing your healing taken by 8% for 4.4 seconds pretty strong. There is a version of this that just does the debuff that lasts 5.5, but I think for 1.1 seconds getting an extra 8% healing, which is pretty good, is well worth having. And I also felt that this was more aggressive than the uh, weapon damage glyph in the case of this build. Up to you on that front, but yeah. Shield, the only thing important here needs to again be enchanted with Magicka. Even if you choose to try glyph the armor, this shield should definitely be Magicka because it's on your damaging bar. There's no reason to swap that off. And then the sword is Nernhold. 
Okay, that's the complicated bit. So let's go on the skill bar. Skill bar, we've made a few changes. First skill is Fragmented Shield. We've dropped Deep Breath off here. How do we complement that AoE healing? Answer, we build ourselves for more healing in the first place. This also gives us great stamina sustain. What does it do? It gives us the worst damage shield you are ever going to see. But it gives us Major Mending for two for 5.4 seconds, which also gives us 25% more healing. This is really going to be valuable in a lot of fights. It's going to make our Dragon Blood and our Quarter Eyes really good. How you're going to use this is when you're in the fight, you're going to use a Fragmented Shield. Every rotation of your whip, where possible, or if you're under high pressure, try and keep it up for your Dragon Bloods and your Quarter Eyes to maintain your healing. There's a lot of ways to use it, but it's great. The other really nice thing about this is when we go into our... Sorry, I've got hiccups now. <laughs> Urban Heart passives, we're also going to be able to spam it for helping hands. So when you cast an Urban Heart ability, you restore 990 stamina. So if I spam this, I get a lot of stamina back and it helps manage that slightly lower stamina pool. Main spamble, obviously it's going to be Whip. We've got an 8.8k unbuffed tooltip on that currently. Very juicy. I know not bad at all considering how cheap that is and how much sort of damage and pressure we've got behind it. And that obviously... If you don't know that, you've never played Magic Decay. Quarter Eyes, real sexy skill here. Both morphs are actually going to be really good for this build. I've not tried Flames of Oblivion because I've kind of fallen in love with Quarter Eyes for survivability. But in 1v1s, you're probably going to want to try Flames of Oblivion because it's going to completely wreck in the fight. Um, it's a big, big dot. This one gives us a big heal in a burst. It's not much less than Dragon Blood, and it happens a decent chunk of times. Four big ticks of a heal. So in terms of a heart, this is huge. It also gives us crit on our front bar, which being in heavy is going to benefit us heavily. We need that extra damage. Number four is going to be Coagulated Dragon Blood. Not a bad heal tool tip on that. 7.8k plus the 33% is really getting to Breath of Life standards, especially when we put Major Mending on. It's a juicy, sexy heal. And that's obviously also going to give us the Major Fortitude. Who cares? Our uh, number five is going to be Structured Entropy. So although the light attack damage is increased and some people will go for Degeneration, I don't think it's worth it for Maj DK. I think as a Maj DK, you're going to want to go for Structured. Why? Because you're not going to light attack that much. A lot of the fight you're going to be blocking. You're not going to proc this very easily. Structured gives you more max health. And that more max health is going to in turn allow our coagulating blood, which scales on health left, to heal easier for higher amounts. And so it's going to benefit our healing. Whoever's on the horse, please, for God's sake, stop that. Our ulti is then going to be Leap. That launches ourselves an enemy. Big boy damage. Nice burst. Pretty cheap. You could run Meteor there if you so wish. I still strongly believe that Leap is better than Meteor. Um, but yeah, that's going to come down to personal preference. All right, that's the front bar. Back bar is a little more generic. We're running Burning Embers, Sexy Dot, Sexy Burst Heal. If you feel you're overhealing, another great option here is to run Engulfing Flames because that's going to give you another 10% damage, which is actually really, really good. The only issue, again, with Engulfing Flames is its AoE. And having that AoE is going to potentially end up screwing you over on the terms of your slowed. So that's why I don't use that at the moment. Um, but if you're overheating, you could also change the Flames of Oblivion. Our next skill is Fossilized. It's going to be our CC. You could also try Time Stop here, the new Sigic one. I didn't really enjoy it enough on DK to try it, but I will be using those Sigic skills on some of my other classes for certain. Oh my god, what are they doing? Number three is our key skill here, Elemental Drain. This is why we're using Ice Staff. So very brief explanation. If you don't know why Ice Staff is so good on Magic K, check out my previous build videos. The most early Ice Staff build will explain it in quite some detail. But basically, as long as you don't run Trifocus, you still block from your Stamina Pool rather than your Magic Pool. But you still get the 36% block reduction and 20% mitigation that the Ancient Knowledge passive gives. So essentially... We can block like a one on shield, but unlock elemental drain, which is going to be essential for our sustain. And it's going to give us that light armor penetration. Brilliant skill, very strong and works perfectly. Number four is going to be reflective plate. I actually haven't maxed this. I really should because it does get cheaper in cost as you go. Uh, but this is really nice, actually. So I was surprised how I found this useful. What this does is it's the same as other wings and that will reflect a projectile. It then removes all snares. I'm going to disclaim something here. That's useless in terms of snares. Because if you remove a snare, the cold, harsh reality is somebody's going to snare you again. It's going to be pointless. 
However, where this is really useful is if you get rooted, because if you get rooted, you can use this rather than roll dodging and burning your stamina to escape the root. So things like talons, in case, ice reach, there's a lot of them. And this is a great escape of those. I like it very much for that. And that's why I chose this morph, not the snares, but the roots. Number five is Volatile Armor, Resistance, Juicy Dot. This is our only AoE skill. So when you are using Volatile Armor, you want to make sure that when you are casting this, you're hitting as less people as possible, preferably only one. If that's not the case, when you proc it, you want to see if anybody gets slowed. Or better still, wait until somebody is already proc slowed, so your initial tick on slowed when you know it's nearly down, to put it back up so that you're not going to proc slowed on the wrong target. It's definitely viable to play this skill. And I would say you should be fine. But it does take a bit of practice getting used to that. Now, back bar ulti has changed. Because we're no longer needing banner. We've already got 100% mage to file uptime. We don't need standard. So, we run the Sigic ulti. Our back bar is a frost stuff. It's slightly squishier than the one on shield in terms of resistance. Not much, but a little bit. About 1.7k resists. So why not take some more tankiness? 8% from minor protection from the temporal guard morph of Sigic. If you don't want to run this, your next best ult choice is going to be either Destro ult for a group play. Really, I would not advise that, but that's up to you. I'd still go Leap. Uh, the ulti that I would run there would be Shooting Star. So that will basically give you a bit more magicka and it give you another burst ulti choice. But yeah, Temporal Guard is definitely going to be your best on the back bar in the case of this. Easy, right? I know. Simple. Our stats for those who haven't seen those yet, quickly. Our food is off. Fuck. Remember that I've got 600 reduce costs from these two infused glyphs. So although the regen is about to look horrific, our elemental drain and heavy armor passives completely compensate. It's very rare that I go low on magicka. And I've even considered changing this infused glyph to another magic glyph. But our stats are as... This is bugged again. This is really annoying. For those who don't know, there's a really bullshit bug with food. If you use it on the wrong bar, it gives you less stats. I have to fix this. Sorry anybody watching this live because I, I upload this straight from a live footage. It's a very, very weird bug right now. I'm going to try to use it on my back bar and see if that will fix it. There we go. You see what I mean? My stats change based on the bar I eat food. It's so weird. Anyway, our Magicka is 38.3k. Pretty tasty indeed. Not bad. And that's about Mage Light. With Mage Light, we're nearly 41k. Our health, 29k, and stamina, 16.6k. All very tasty there. Spell damage is going to sit anywhere between 19.5 to 2k uh, before any resource buff. That will hook you up on the spell damage. So not bad at all considering how much pressure slows and Jorix are. Our mag recovery, as I said, looks god-awful, but you don't need regen at all. Ellie Drain, Heavy Armor, and the Reduced Cost completely sustains you, especially with that Infused Magicka Steel Cliff. The only way to understand and truly believe that is to try it, and you will realize just how much sustain. Like I said, I almost over-sustain. Spell Crit is 40%. We're on a pretty strong campaign right now, though. That's normally 32%. I think DC has a lot of the keeps. We're then using the Mage Mundus. You could use Apprentice. I think the Mage is going to be nicer in the case of this build. It's slightly less damage, but it does benefit your overall stat pool in terms of sustain. I do prefer the Mage, in my opinion. Um, yeah, you could go Apprentice. That's up to you. Who knows? Your choice. And we are not a Vampire. I don't really advise going Vamp this patch. Fire damage from Light Attacks is high. Easy, right? Not a problem. Crit resist 2.1k, and our base resistance is very, very high. Nearly at cap here. Uh, if I proc this real fast, our base resistances are at 29 and a half spell and 25.2 physical. Finally, onto our CP. As I said, this is definitely min maxed. So it's up to you whether you change it, but I've tested a fair bit on this. This is min maxed. We have 66 in Warlord for reduced cost, uh, reduced cost of break free. This is going to lower any stamina drain. Everything in the green tree for us is about lowering the cost of our stamina. Why did I not turn that off? I'm so sorry, viewers. I'll get onto that in a sec. 66 into Warlord for break free. That is going to reduce the cost of CC breaking. Essential for our stamina sustain. One in Siphoner. But Tom, that's fucking useless, mate. It's not. This is really good. The reason this one point in Siphoner is worth the one point is this is going to show anybody with add-ons as Siphoner proct. A lot of people panic when they see that they're going to cleanse. We have one point that I simply could not put usefully. So we put it in Siphoner. This one point, although it does nothing, 
will show people on their alerts that Siphoner has procced. And so you may force people to cleanse, purge, or whatever in bad scenarios. So it makes the use of that one point in the best possible way. Zero in this tree whatsoever. Our base return is so little, it's pointless. But this is where we're stacking most of them. 81 in Shadow Ward. We want to reduce that block cost. Our stam is not quite as high as previous builds. It's still absolutely fine to sustain, but why not make it nice and cheap? 40 in Tumbling. So this is a little lower than previous patches, but I'd run 56. That's because we no longer need to roll dodge roots. So there's a fair few less times I roll dodge. I only roll dodge if I'm taking so much damage that I'm definitely going to die before I can heal. So I'll heal and dodge to get that heal off. That is why you get away with less in there. The big one is 62 and Befoul is the number to go for. Do not go for less because that is the best scaling and do not go for more because that's the best scaling. This is the spot to be 44% healed above. Any less is 43. Any more starts to get a bit shit on the scaling. So that's why I would go for the green tree. The blue tree then, 27 in Blessed for healing. A little bit less because the extra damage we've got does a great job for us. 40 into Elfborn for our crit. We're in heavy, slightly lower crit, so we don't want to stack into there that much. And then we have 64 Elemental Expert, 47 Spell Erosion. That is going to give you the best scaling here where possible when we have 72 in Master Arms. Now note, although that should round down at 23, it actually doesn't. I have tested this. So this gives us the best overall stats. For whatever reason, 72 works. So yeah, go 72, not 73. And then none in Falmaturge. We're not running enough dots to deem that worthy. Red tree, 66 in Ironclad. Reduce that direct damage. Damage. And 54 in Resistant. That's going to be very important. Make sure you copy those numbers. I'll explain the passives in a sec. 20 in Fixed Skin for Dots. 43 Hardy. 37 Elements Defender. And again, a bit less in Healing because of the way we're running the build. Only 7% instead of 9. 27. And 3 in Expert Defender. I really advise putting these in. The light attacks are hard. Free scales are pretty damp quickly for what you're putting in. So well worth the points there. Final thing to mention are a few passives we're trying to hit. So red tree, we hit the 30 passive, which gives magic recovery to our friends if we res them. Doesn't hurt to get that. We get it accidentally anyway. This tree, we don't care about the passives really, so it doesn't matter very much. We're not worried about 120. In this tree, we do want the 120-ish. It's not that great, but it does add up in a bit of burst survivability. It's pretty tiny, but since we can get there, it doesn't hurt to do so. So I would advise going for that in this case. The one that you really got to hit is Resilient. That crit damage is really brilliant. So definitely hit that on a Magic Decay every time. None of those matter. Butcher's only three points away, but we're not light attacking much, so it's not worth it. We need all of the points in here. Those passives don't matter. Those passives don't matter. And these passives don't matter at all. So, yeah. I hope this will work out for you. Like I said, I would be almost certain that Sloads is going to get nerfed at some point. I hope sooner rather than later. But for the time being, I'm going to use it because it is definitely best in the slot for a Magic DK and any other single target first build. So, yeah, we're going to bang it on. Good luck with the build, guys. I hope this was useful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, potentially Magic Talk or Magplar.